the art world in those days was very small. Artists in New York, whether American or from overseas, they all lived in a very small area in Soho, and everybody knew everybody. So after the wrapped coast, I asked Christo, who of the artists would you recommend for another project? Because by that time I started my own business and I wanted to continue the sequence of projects. They said, we did a project in Colorado, the Valley Curtain, and there were two young Englishmen, very interesting. They dressed alike, kept to themselves, but we had a good feeling about them. I said, okay, what's their name? Gilbert and George. So next time in London, I contacted their gallery, uh, Nigel Greenwood, and arranged a meeting. Now I can still vividly recall our first meeting. In those days, I stayed in a hotel called Carlton Towers, and we made an appointment for Gilbert and George to come and meet me for a cup of tea. So in they walked at the appointed hour and as soon as they walked in, their presence was like electrifying. They looked very different. George very English, Gilbert from very northern Italy, sort of between Italy and Austria. But they dressed identical. Same beautifully tailored old-fashioned suit, same shirt, same tie, same shoes. They were not relaxed, they were very formal. They were already then the living sculptures. I told them, what I'm endeavouring to do is to bring to Australia the best of contemporary art to be able to share with the Australian artist and Australian public what is the most interesting happening internationally. Would they come to Sydney and Melbourne to have an exhibition and to perform a piece which they started about two years before and for which they became famous called Underneath the Arches. And they do that for five hours non-stop. It's breathtaking. So they agreed to come to Australia. I mean, in those days, there was a very little red tape. Today, if you want an, an overseas artist to come, they have to get agreement from their galleries. It's, I keep emphasizing what a different world it was. And from the moment they came to Australia, they caused an absolute riot. They said the most outrageous things in the press conference. They were interviewed for TV, which could be only run as a late night thing, because it was definitely R-rated. They were just like a, a phenomenon. This piece, underneath the arches, they put bronze on their faces and hands. I haven't seen the piece being performed, so I was very anxious when they walked out in their suits. At that moment, I knew it was going to be a great success because they were absolutely hypnotic. A number of my artist friends said, oh, well, just come and look, but that's not really art. And instead of saying five minutes, like their original intention, they stayed the whole day. 
They were at the Art Gallery of New South Wales and then later at the National Gallery in Victoria. And in the five days they performed in Sydney and Melbourne through enormous crowds. I mean, their popularity in Australia and worldwide hasn't really changed. They came back for our 40th anniversary and they gave a talk with Edmund Capon at the Art Gallery of New South Wales. And they never had as many people in the great entrance hall as that day. They had to turn people away. There were 10,000 people wanting to come and see Gilbert and George. They're in their 70s now, but they still have a following of young people. There's something about them that universally catches interest, that connects. One of the things that I really am grateful is that a great majority of the artists that we work with, I stay friends. With Christo and Jean-Claude, with Gilbert and George, I see them at every opportunity that I'm overseas. What was amazing about Gilbert and George, and this is a very personal recollection, is that they were most professional during the day, but at night they parted so hard, something which I wasn't used to in my early 30s. When they left, my laundry was full of empty gin bottles, and I don't really drink a lot of gin. So it was just unbelievable. But next morning, they were as sober as anything. How they did it remains a mystery.